Hello and welcome to Alternate Football History, where we look at the great what-ifs of the beautiful game and attempt to predict what may have happened if football had taken a different course. Like and subscribe to get more Alternate Football History videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. Today we'll be continuing our series of looking at what if Yugoslavia didn't break up. This is the fourth part of the series, so if you want to see how a united Yugoslavia would do in the 90s and 2000s, check out the previous videos. Last time we looked at Euro 2004, the 2006 World Cup and Euro 2008 where Yugoslavia were no longer a top nation but were getting close to the heights of the 90s. Our topics today will cover the 2010 World Cup, Euro 2012 and the 2014 World Cup. Firstly, the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. In reality, the only former Yugoslav nation to qualify for the World Cup was Serbia and Slovenia, with Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Macedonia and Montenegro failing to qualify. Only two of the back five changed from the side that reached the Euro 2008 semi-final with Samir Handanovic and Alexander Kolarov coming in for Steep Pletskosa and veteran Koluka, who both remain in the squad. The only other change would be Milos Krasic, who was a target for top clubs across Europe that summer due to his form at CSKA Moscow, coming in for Goran Pandev, although the two would likely rotate. In previous videos I explained the inclusion of Zlatan Ibrahimovic choosing to play for Yugoslavia, so watch them to get a full explanation. He would be the biggest threat for the team, although Rakitic and Modric would be excellent in midfield, and Pjanic, Krankjar, Pandev, Zeko and Olic are all excellent options off the bench. Due to a fairly poor record since the 90s, Yugoslavia would likely lose the pot one position for this World Cup, but with the likes of Modric and Ibrahimovic, they are likely good enough to qualify in second place. If given Serbia's group, they would face the United States in the round of 16 and would have enough to get past them. They would then meet an excellent Uruguay side and lose to the Diego Forlan inspired team. So a quarterfinal exit but certainly signs that this team could reach the height of the 90s when they won Euro 96, as described in the first video of this series. Into Euro 2012 then, where Croatia were the only former Yugoslav nation to qualify and dropped out at the group stage. Still, better than the lack of qualification of Serbia, Slovenia, Bosnia, Macedonia and Montenegro. Nemanja Vidic had retired from international duty by this point, so Borussia Dortmund centre-back Nevan Subotic comes in. Similarly, Miralan Pjanic comes in for the aging Dejan Stankovic. With Krasic's dramatic drop in form after his transfer to Juventus, Goran Pandev gets back into the team, with Ivan Perisic coming in for his first international tournament on the other wing. As always, they are spearheaded by Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Youngsters Dusan Tadic and Steven Jovetic break into the squad, while Edin Dzeko and Mario Mandzukic give options off the bench, two strikers who would undoubtedly start for most teams at the tournament. With the likes of Ibrahimovic, Modric, Rakitic and Ivanovic in the side, Yugoslav would progress through the group stage. Now I believe this is a tournament where the draw means a lot to how far Yugoslavia go. An easy draw could make the world of difference, so I've decided that Yugoslavia would most likely replace Russia in Pot 2 and therefore be drawn against Czechia, Greece and Poland, a pretty favourable draw and I'd expect them to top the group. This sets up a quarter final against Portugal, a tight game is likely but I think I'd favour this Yugoslavia side and set up a semi-final against Spain. Although Spain struggled past Portugal in reality, I think they'd also get past Yugoslavia, knocking them out in the semi-final stage. Again, Yugoslavia are making it to the latter stages and look like they are once again becoming one of the top teams in Europe. And finally, the 2014 World Cup. Slovenia, Macedonia and Montenegro again failed to qualify, whilst Croatia, Serbia and Bosnia all made it to Brazil, but were all knocked out of the group stage. Nevin Subotic fell out of favour for Sinisha Mihailovic's Serbia team in reality, so it's also left out here, with Dejan Lovren taking his place. Nemanja Matic was in excellent form for Benfica and secured a move back to Chelsea that summer, so takes Pjanic's place in midfield. Kosovan born Jordan Shakiri comes into the team. As with the situation with Ibrahimovic, in a world without Yugoslavia breaking up, Shakiri may well choose to play for the nation of his birth, so let's include him. Ibrahimovic, Rakitic, Modric, Kolarev, Ivanovic, Serna, 
and Handanovic have now all become regulars for the national team, featuring in all the teams in this part. Tadic, Dzeko, Mandzukic and Olic again provide options in the squad, as well as Matteo Kovacic, now a regular Inter, and Adnan Yanezai following his breakout season at Manchester United. Yanezai has been included using the same logic as Shakiri and Ibrahimovic, despite not being born in Yugoslavia, because he's eligible, and therefore, why not? With Yugoslavia being impressive at the last few tournaments, they would probably take Switzerland's place as a pot one team, so we'd get a group of France, Ecuador and Honduras, but may well finish second to France. This gives them Argentina in the second round, who only scraped past Switzerland, and I think with the talent Yugoslavia have, they would fare better and get through to the quarter-final. There they would face Belgium, who weren't quite in their golden generation yet, so probably wouldn't match Yugoslavia. With players like Modric, Ibrahimovic and Rakitic, many people begin thinking Yugoslavia could go all the way and win their first ever World Cup. This would become increasingly likely as they beat the Netherlands in the semi-final. Unfortunately, they wouldn't be up for the challenge against Germany as the occasion gets to them and they fail at the final hurdle. Heartbreaking, but proof that Yugoslavia are once again one of the world's top nations. And with that, we come to the end of our penultimate video of the series, with Yugoslavia set to be amongst the favourites in the following tournaments. Next time, we look at Euro 2016 and the 2018 World Cup, before picking what may be the squad for the delayed Euro 2020. As always, thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed the fourth part of this series. If so, don't forget to like and subscribe to see more alternate football history videos, and find out what would have happened next with the Yugoslavia national team.